Hello again, this is Colt from Spit and Tax Upholstery. I've been getting lots of comments from everybody. I'm trying to fit y'all in. One of them was uh, ATV seat. And uh, so we're gonna do that today. Uh, kind of going, going back a little bit. I got a, a friend of mine, Ron, his boat's on the table right now. But don't worry, Ron, this didn't take too long. I got gotcha. you. So, uh, these seats are pretty straightforward. You uh, will be surprised. And uh, normally this seat right here is uh, uh, $350. You'll pay if you want your seat done. I think this is a four-wheeler seat. But it's, uh, it's not as hard as one might think. Again, like I said in past videos, I'm giving up my secrets, but it is what it is. It shouldn't be uh, an issue. So these are the things that you'll need. You'll need the old trusty, rusty Osborne staple puller, pair of dykes, nice be a staple gun or whatever you have, can of foam lock and some scrim, quarter inch scrim. I like to use scrim as you all know. Or you can just use foam if that's all you've got. Uh, I wouldn't recommend putting uh, <clears throat> half inch on. It's just uh, it's just too high of a profile. So unless there's damage on, but it feels like this is fine. So I went through and and pulled all the staples off, as you can see. So I could kind of move, but you just go through like this, and you just pop them all loose. They all come real loose. Uh, ATV seats, motorcycle seats. Most that you're going to run across are all just like this. It's all the same. And these are plastic. Some of them are fiberglass. But your stapler, you might have to turn up the PSI on your stapler if you're not getting, a, you know, a proper purchase with with your staples. And these are uh, these are a bigger staple. Uh, This is, uh, I don't use these size of staples. I use, uh, you know, a lot of Fasco, 22 gauge fine wire, three each leg and length. So once you pull the hide off, okay, see that? That's the hide that we just took off the seat. Set that to the side for right now. <sighs> kind of come through, make sure there's no damage on your foam. Pick off any kind of little boogers that I might be on there. Give it an eyeball. Okay, you can see how that is kind of wrinkled up, the edge of that foam. So while we're pulling these staples, what we're gonna do is we, going to plug in. I should have had this done. I didn't realize that it was uh, out of water. So real quick, I'll put some water in here. These old cheap gloves. And that's enough for the, the party that we're doing right now. All right, put that down there. We will plug in our steamer. They come right on. Boom, boom. All right, she's ready to go. So in the meantime, we come back over here and, you know, you got some holdouts. Come through and you, with your dikes and you just pull off those remaining staples and there's a lot of different kinds of upholstery that's like this so I call this a steam and staple okay you can either steam steam uh, your vinyl I'm using a marine vinyl I like to use marine vinyls on all of my ATV seats because they're UV resistant and, uh, you know, 
boat stuff. It holds up. You know, you don't want to use a cheap vinyl when you're when you're doing uh, ATV seats, motorcycle seats, none of that. Don't go there because the people will be back going, what happened? This thing wore out. So like I said, and always do say, treat your folks right and you'll have customers and friends, friendships that'll last a long time, you know? And uh, I give all credit to God always. Oh, there's a good one. Now speaking of that, there's a quick one here. This is James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. And help you do stuff like this. Hop, hop! You with me? Okay. So, we're about ready. Waiting for our steam to come out here. So, like I said, uh, you, uh, you just tear down your seat. If you're, uh, there, I, I'll do a video on one that has like holes in it. There's big holes missing and I'll show you how to fill those holes. And then you put your topper on. That's the topper right there over here. Come this way. There we go. Quarter inch scrim. That's your topper. Doesn't have to be scrim, but use scrim. I recommend scrim because of the, um, the backing that's on it. That mesh backing that just gives it a rigidity and it's, it's just better. It's a better product, you know? Get in where you fit in, you know, you might not have scrim, but. Okay, and then, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. and this is the vinyl that I chose. He, I asked him, he wants some black. This is for my neighbor. And uh, he comes over with his, his, uh, his tractor and moves logs around for me. And when we have windfalls, and he gives me his trees, brings them over, stacks them for me so I can cut them. Because as you can see over there, see that beautiful fire going on over there? Underneath those two beautiful elk. gotta have wood so i'll scratch my back i'll scratch yours and uh that's a beautiful thing about upholstery you know you can love your friends up okay so that's what we've chosen it's a real good pebble grain uh stiff black marine now why i, why I brought out the steamer is because you notice the lip up here you see how that's wrinkled up so you bring your steamer, just kind of lean it in there. Now watch her, watch her come back to life. Within reason. See that? See how that, that was all wrinkled up? See how that's laying flat now? You just play with it, you know, work it. Come from the outside and come in and see how that's... See that? You want to always come through and steam up your stuff. Now he's got a little degeneration up here, you can see, but uh, that'll still hold true because we're gonna put that new topper foam on there. But when they're wrinkled like that, like the back here, it is what it is. You might, you might wanna go over it a couple times down the field. Okay, like this, start at the top, drag it real slow and you'll hear it. You hear that? That's blowing through that foam. Always steam your foam, okay? Yeah, you know, it gives it a, gives it a new breath. And when you're at this stage, if you have mold issues, just, uh, you know, a sp standard spray bottle, you know, a teaspoon of bleach, Shake it up real good and give it a spray, let it dry. And uh, that, that's good enough. Now you see that, that little crease there? Now watch that go away. See how she starts to walk out? See that? That's why you do this. And if it stops blowing steam, you just hold your, hold your hose up and give it a little shake. And then the condensation runs down back into the pump. You can see how it's going real good now? So you have to come back and forth. You play with those. You think your steamer's broke, but it ain't. Just hold the hose above your head or as close as you can and give it a shake. So yeah, and I always like to, you know, come down the side. These closed celled foams, they get real compacted around the edges and you can see it's more receptive on the top. But that's all you're going to get really out of this. So I just wanted to get those front pieces so they laid flat. 
Turn off your steamer. Get her out of your way. That's all we'll need for this, this video. Keep it out of your way so it's not underfoot. Okay, so now we're prepped for that. We'll set this over here next to the good book. Oh, and another thing, when, with your hose, I always take, before you start a project, even if it's black, you know, go get some isopropyl alcohol from Walmart, okay? And you can, you can get three jugs out of one. Just keep adding water to it. Get yourself a paper towel, grab your air hose, and wrap the paper towel and rubbing alcohol around it, and give it a drag. Why am I doing this? Okay? You're in a shop like this, it gets dusty. You're working. You don't got time to clean, clean all the time, but unless it's a clean day, you know, that's what you're doing that day is cleaning. And see, so you might be, you might have a lighter co colored vinyl. Well, this will mar, give little skid marks on your vinyl. So this eliminates that. So good habits, cleaning habits are good habits. Uh, and this will happen to you. You'll be like, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's almost done. You're doing good job. success, you know, and you're doll jacked. And you look back and your hose drug across the top of that seat. And uh, I mean, if you put too many chemicals on vinyls and stuff, you'll take off the finish. And at a distance, you'll see. Even though you got that, that, that skid mark or that, you know, that black stain, dirt stain or whatever it is. Even though you got it out at a distance, you'll see a slight uh, variation of color. So you've removed some of the patina, if you will, on the, um, the vinyls. Just a little little trick, you know, so always clean your stuff, have it all ready. We're using black, but even black can take a mar off of a dirty hose. Okay, so this is how you do it. <clears throat> Make sure you don't have no staples. I like to lay down a, you know, a cheap old Harbor Freight cloth. Okay, make sure there's no boogers on it. Nothing that's going to poke a hole in your in your new vinyl. Face down, okay? Take your old skin off the seat. Now this is, uh, you're wondering, how do I know what to do and blah, blah, blah. Okay, you just make it a little bit bigger. Okay, here's the, you know how the shape was. This was the top because it had, it had, uh, it was compromised. And you see how they, they, they had sewn a piece in to where the top of the seat right here. Okay, they, they sewed another piece in. Well, you don't always have to do that. I'm going to show you right now how to avoid having to sew this little dog ear that they have that covered up that front piece because they couldn't get it to lay over. Okay? This is how I do dental chairs. This is another huge secret that I'm giving up to you. Um, there's always a different way around the barn sometimes. So... Okay, this is your seat. So I'm just gonna go long, maybe four inches on the top. And the only reason I'm going long four inches on the top, the salvage on the edges, give me something to hold on to, okay? While I'm tugging and pulling and using this heat gun. I can find it. Okay, where are you hiding, darling? Where are you hiding? She's in here somewhere. There she is. <clears throat> well, this is a really good, uh, got it on Amazon, Fujiwara. <laughs> She's a screamer. So you get this all ready. And I like to use, uh, like when you have it, when you're working a heat gun, when you set it down, it'll burn things. So you want to be able to lay it on something. Okay, and this is just, uh, I use this kind of board for uh, doing door panels and stuff like that. So now we'll plug this into there and uh, get one that has a setting, okay? See that, one through eight. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, she's ready to rumble. And then this, let me grab some scissors. So, like I said, you just want four inches up here, four or five, whatever. Get in where you fit in. Pull it to where you know you got your length. And then just come behind it. 
Boom. Still got more remnant. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So now this is our piece. Uh, this is the old one. Don't need it. That ain't a pattern thing that you got to iron out and try to trace it to get it right. No. This is a different application. You made it too big for this seat, clearly, see? But there's a method to my madness. Okay, steam and staple, or heat gun and staple. But first, what we have to do here is um, we have to put this topper foam on here. I like to do this. We could, we could just put this new, it, it's in good enough shape to just put this right on here, okay? But I'm gonna glue this down. All right. And why I'm gluing it down is because of that little dog ear on that old one, how they sewed it on. It didn't fit. Now, if I didn't do it this way, I might have to add that little piece. So we have our vinyl. It's cut to fit. We'll set that over here on our. Well, no, no, no. We'll set that over here. And then what we do is we're going to take this. This is just something I had laying around. I got a better fitting board. But for now, what we're gonna do, because I'm gonna I'm gonna be gluing. So I like to have it away from me. So this is what we'll do. Okay. It's all cleaned off. And another another good rule of thumb probably is to take your vinyl, okay? Nope, that's my, that's my other one. Oops, 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 there it is. Take the piece that you just cut for your seat, okay? And this will give you an idea of how much scrim you need. Try to always utilize every, every piece of your scrim. Lay it out like this, okay? So now you have a piece of scrim. You can come a little wide on the edges just so you know it's going to line up no matter what. So this doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get the, the size that you need. Okay, cool. Take care of that remnant later. So now, what I'm gonna do here is, again, come through, get rid of any kind of, any, anything at this stage, any debris, little piece of, of little lint ball, anything's gonna show up, okay? It's gonna show up. So you wanna keep that vinyl real clean, all right? And then we'll set that over here. Same thing with this. All these, like there's some little pieces of debris and wood and you never know what's in your shop sometimes. You try to be clean, but you're gonna get stuff that it just is what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna come back here. <clears throat> I'm going to mark my middle, mark my middle. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, now, this is where some people would go, does the, the mesh, see that mesh that's on the very top of that? I'll pull that apart, you see that little mesh? That's what scrim is. So when you're sewing, you always sew with that mesh down, so when you, you know, and then your vinyl's on top, and you sew through that, your hook and loop comes through there and this prevents your stitch from popping back through, okay? And failing on you and ruining your whole piece. That's the, that's the whole uh, premise behind scrim. But I like it because of its, uh, its, um, uh, its durability factor. I don't know, I just, it just makes sense, doesn't it? Think about it. So back to uh, uh, what I was talking about. So do you put the scrim up on the seat? Or do you put the foam side up on the seat? Huh? What do you think? Scrim side up or scrim side down? 
I like to put the scrim side up when I'm just doing a topper. So you got foam to foam, not fabric to foam. Okay, it's a better bond. Bam! Okay, so, and it's black. So what I like to do is just, you know, so I know that's it. But what I meant was a, a black marker. Like if you're using uh, a, a real, uh, a, a white piece of vinyl or piece of beige, there is a possibility that if you had dark enough ink, it, you know, it, you don't want to take the chance of it showing through. So here we go. We take our, whoo, it's warming up in here. Got the fire going. All right, so what we do is I'm gonna scooch that over here so I got room because I don't like to mess up my tables. You saw me paint my tables, which we have to paint them again pretty soon. They get dirty quick. And what does that do? It makes you feel better about your shop and what you're doing. It's, it's, it's just like a subliminal thing. You're just like, ah, it looks nice in here. And you just, you just seem to do better, okay? So we start in the middle. This is scrim. The scrim side up, remember? Foam to foam. And then, Just for now, again, no booger balls underneath it there because that'll show through. That little piece of whatever, that'll show through. <sighs> that'll show through on your vinyl and he'll see a little blemish on his seat. All right, we start in the middle. Boom, boom. Give it a good shake. And you always start in the middle. This is like when you do uh, tops. Uh, headliners and trucks and stuff. Always start in the middle. And this is the same kind of premise. You want to put this on thick right through here, okay? Not quite all the way over the edges yet. And I'll show you why. Just start in the middle. Leave these edges, okay? Just in the middle, real good on the top right there. I don't know, five inches. Come all the way down to the back. Yep, 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 yep. Now, okay, give it another shake. Fold it in half, okay? Fold it in half. Make sure that you have, you, you, you've exceeded the both, the front and the back. And then just kinda, see that line when I'm looking down between these, this piece of scrim, I can split the difference. And I lay the top down like that. See this? Put my hand in there gently. Keep the line straight down the middle. And just push. All the way to the bottom. Look, you're upholstering. Okay? And as you can see, the back, right, that's where it's the bottom of the seat. Okay? So, this is what we have. Okay, and I like to just give that a couple minutes. I put it on wet. The reason that you do this is because of this application. It's a topper. Just in case you moved wrong and that line wasn't straight down the middle of that seat. Okay, because, you know, we clearly have more than enough, but it's a good rule of thumb. <clears throat> what if you don't have enough and you just barely have enough to cover this seat? That line's imperative. And uh, then the rest of it isn't glued down. And it's the, and the, 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 the spray foam is still uh, wet. So you could still pull it up. But when foam to foam comes, especially these closed cell foams and then this, this scrim, oh, they lock quick. So it'll give you a minute to, to, to go, oh, 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 and pull it back up and readjust. Okay, but you only got a second. So be calm and remember, what am I doing? Always tell yourself, what am I doing? Stand back and go, it's a seat. Take it easy. In my videos, I will beat a dead horse, okay? And I talk fast sometimes. Uh, I'm getting used to finding my gait in these videos. It's not easy, but uh, uh, that's the whole premise behind my videos is over and over and over. And then eventually you just go, that, I can do this. 
you know? That's what being mundane and annoying in the videos accomplishes for you, okay? Uh, if you've never done this, slow and low and mundane and repetition, okay? And I'm trying, I'll try to slow down, not talk so much. I get to going and boy, you know, I, I sound insane, I'm sure. So anyway, moving along, let's pull her back over. You know, I gave it a, I don't know what, five minutes. And so, you know, you use, use the board so you don't, you don't get glue on your, your blanket. So, boom, boom. We come around. We hit the, hit the main body real good. Pull it up. Make sure you spray. You know, you want to get good coverage. So grab it, pinch it to where it, to where it resists, and then you're good. And you hit it real thick. But not crazy, you know, you don't got to use a whole can of glue. And you see that little, that little kind of a marred hole from the old one? This scrim takes care of all that. And then it's flawless and brand new. Okay, so just the foam, never underneath, okay? Just to the edges. And then, once again, you just kind of, you'll see the contours like that. So I would start in the front there and just kind of contour down and then slowly come back around slowly come back around and towards the butt here. Come over here to the back. Now you see how that rounds? So what I'll do is I'll pull up and push down and see how flat that is. Then I don't have wrinkles in my, in my, my scrim. You see how that came around? Now you see how that, you see that? You, you wanna pull it. Sometimes you gotta pull it up and pull it down. You see how that, see how that perfect round? Has to be flat. So you're gonna to have to manipulate this and you don't have a whole lot of time. See that, it'll come up a little bit and pull it back. See that? And once you do that once, you're locked in and you're golden, okay? Don't worry about it, you're good. And so this side is essentially done. So what you do is I'll, I will come from the front. See this? I'll come from the front. Okay, and I'm going to leave myself a half of an inch all the way around the perimeter. Always leave a half of an inch overshot on your foam and try to get even pushes. See how my scissors will go even push, come back up, even push. Try to get away from jagged marks. Good rule of thumb. So we're half inch all the way around. And if the foam's there, just go by the plastic. Half inch, five eighths. Okay, do that one side, do the middle, then do the one side. And then come around to right in the middle of the back and take off your salvage. Okay, so you with me? So now we started out, we did the middle, we got made sure there was no, all these little things that come off the boards and stuff. You're good now. But, um, so we started in the middle, held it down. Boom, boom, boom. Started on, let it dry for a minute. Did this side, laid it over, pulled it to where it, see that if it just holds that contour, holds that contour perfect. See that, that corner, that's how you do corners. Is as you go down, you just pull it from the outside and you just kind of lean into it. You know, you're gonna have to be doing this kind of stuff. Wabba! And then just pull it, bam, let it lock, let go. So now we're gonna do this side. Okay, once again, keep it up off your, your pad and then see, see how I pull up and it, and, and it stops moving? That's where you want to spread. And hit it real good on that. Come right into that crease. Hit it real good. You don't want to miss any glue. You don't want no separation. Hit it real good. And that should be good enough for that top piece. You come around that bottom, right to the edge. See that? Real good on that elbow. Remember we had to pull that over. And then the field, because it's drier, it's not as, as weathered as the bottom. So you gotta, it'll suck that glue up a little bit more. But you wanna put it on. Don't be afraid to use it. One shot, one kill with this, okay? And I don't tack the, the foam. You don't have to in this application, you have plenty. So once again, 
Okay, while it's still, still wet, you can come from the front and give it a pull, okay? And then the back, you see that, that elbow there? I'm gonna come like this and pull it out and push down. See how I, I got that contour? Okay. She's still a little wet. She's not biting right away, but she will. Yep, yep. Yeah. And don't worry if there's a couple little wrinkles towards the very bottom, it doesn't matter. It's all gonna cover, okay? And then pull, come down. You could give it a couple, like a minute to tack up. So then you pull, okay. Pull like that, you see? See how we have no wrinkles? We're good, we're good. Yep, 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 we made it right to the edge. I'm happy with that, it looks good. It's all flat. And you get a couple pieces of dirt like that, that doesn't matter. The thickness of the vinyl will cover that up. As long as there's no you know, pieces of little wood from your whatever board you're using. Like I said, I normally I use this. I use the uh, uh, these eighth of an inch boards that I use to do uh, uh, door panels. So here we go. We're done with the board. And we come back over here. Okay. Get rid of any any little any little weirdnesses that you had there that are gonna stick on your foam. And remember, we start here, straight pushes, half inch, bam, straight pushes, half inch, straight pushes, half inch. Half inch. Okay. Whew, that, that wood heat's got me going. Okay, so wipe my sweat off. So that's it. You have just did a topper. Okay. Now now there's now there's no, there's no nothing. And you pulled it right. And you, if you see a little little ripple like that from the weathered foam underneath, don't worry because when you put your vinyl on and you pull that tight, all that goes away. Okay, so go through and just kind of push down and under. Push down and under, like the back, once you put your vinyl on there, all of that. All that is nothing. It all pulls flat. Okay. So you just put a piece of uh, uh, one eighth of an inch, or no, quarter inch scrim. This is the good stuff. They have different qualities of it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna let this set up for a minute and then we're gonna come back and we are going to upholster this. And uh, we're gonna glue this one on. This is how I do the dental, the dental chairs to answer, I can't remember your name, but. So we'll be right back. I'm not going anywhere. We're gonna do a bunch of videos today, so. I'll see you around like a donut. God bless you.